This week, episode 299 of Stogie Geeks. I'm your host, Joe Hozempa. We have in studio a very, very special interview and a very, a very, very special treat for you. We have Jack Toronto from Espinosa Cigars. We're going to talk a little bit about their line and what's going on. And also the history and Jack's family history. And then I have a very special guest who I have been trying to get on the show for at least a calendar year. That's a fact. The one, the only, the legendary Nick Goss. If you haven't heard uh, of him, who, who, who. definitely you're in for a treat. It all starts right here on this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 299. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. If you want to follow along of the notes for the show, all you have to do is go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 299, and you will get the links to our guest in the website. And we have two guests that are live here in studio. I want to introduce first Jack Toronto of Espinosa Cigars. Jack, how are you? How are you, Joe? Good, good. You have appeared on Stogie Geeks. I have. I have. Right over there on the other side of the room, we were set up and there was a, like a Calypso bar here or something, but it yeah. was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The bar has switched there. Uh, they've probably expanded. Uh, if you were here a couple years ago, uh, Security Weekly has expanded by at least three or four shows nice. since then, and uh, th things are going pretty pretty well on that side. Full stocked bar, but uh, we're going to take it easy today for sure, except for Nick, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. He, he might have snuck something into his uh, glass. Ooh, Speaking of which, Jameson. Nick, it, you, do you realize it's been a, me seeing you for at least two years now, uh, and you telling me that you're coming on the show for at least a calendar year? Uh yeah yeah. Thank you yeah, for joining. I, I'm a very I'm a very important person. I have you know a very busy hectic schedule. Now. You do you do you do <laughs> traveling up and down. It, it, We're gonna it's get a pleasure in. being here. No no thank you. We're gonna get into to that. And I also want to take some time out and talk about y your specific brand of you. Sure. I think that um, what I've been saying here on the Story Story Geek shows for many many episodes is that you know um, events need uh, a creativity element for sure and um the you got to rise above the noise for that and from what i've seen from what what you've started um it could almost develop into a movement that's my future <laughs> it's my future prediction here uh the here in the north Scary. is the northeast your territory is that's that, correct yeah, yeah so yeah. so here in the northeast you could very well create a movement um are you going to be part of the I, roast? I, I'm too? blushing. I'm blushing now. You are you part of the big roast coming up over movement. there in Queensbury? Are you? Are you in that? No, mix? no. Uh, uh, I, so I just picked up uh, Upstate not, not okay. too too long ago. Okay. Yep. Yep. So yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into to, to some of your events. <laughs> I, I pick things up. I put them down. He picks them up and puts them down. And he moves product, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. That's what he does for sure. So, Jack, yes, uh, y y you're no stranger to the cigar business. No, I've been around a while. I'm getting yeah, old. I'm getting abs old. Absolutely. We have uh, some older Stogie Geeks listeners that tune into the show, and we have uh, some, some, some newer listeners that have recently jumped on in the next couple of, uh, the past couple of years or so. So uh, why don't you bring us up to speed as to, you know, you are 
at Espinosa Cigars now. I am at Espinosa. I was, uh, I think the first time I was on this show, I was uh, working for uh, Roberto Duran Premium Cigars. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then uh, I think we were actually one of the sponsors. Yes, of the I, show. I was just gonna wait for you yeah, to finish yeah, saying that. Yeah, yeah they, they 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 used to be a sponsor of the yeah, show. Yeah, we were one of the sponsors, and then um, I happened to be in the area, and it was planned a little better than this one because this <laughs> one I just walked in on. Um, yeah, but, yeah. For but, those uh, for those of you who are <laughs> listening or watching, uh, I, I literally uh, grabbed Nick and Jack <laughs> next door at the Havana Club and asked them what their well, agenda that, that looks literally. like. Not literally. Uh, <laughs> and I said, uh, can we carve out time for an interview? When? I'm like, now. Yeah. And then I proceeded over to the production crew and said, now. And I want to say special thanks for the Stogie Geeks production so, crew for being incredibly flexible for us to get this in. Yeah, because turned yeah. this around quick. Well, I've been chasing Nick around for a year, and he's on the list. I was, it, it, it was a lot like Bronx Tale. He walked over, <laughs> so he this locked is the all door. About, this is he all looked at us, he goes, well, now you, now, now you just can't leave. Like, <laughs> this is all about Nick. So, that's what you're if you're saying, watching this, this help. This is all about Nick. No, it's not all about Nick. <laughs> Actually, to be honest with you, I approached Nick and he says I'm traveling with Jack. I said, "Well, mm -hmm. Jack, come on too." <laughs> you know, and, and 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 so thank you guys for taking time out. I know Absolutely. that when thank you're you out on the us. road, you're out on the road, uh, you know, tra traveling to different shops, it can be hit or miss yeah. with with events. It can be hit or miss with catching the business owner. It can be hit or miss with uh, you know the the industry and what they want from inventory and all that stuff. So let's kind of get into it. If Jack, if you could elaborate as to what your position is and and talk to us a little about Espinosa and so yeah. So going back to when I was on the show with Duran. Um, after Duran, I went uh, to General Cigar to represent the Tarano brand mm. for about two and a half years, and then that kind of came to an end. Um, at the end of last year, mm -hmm. and uh, I had almost come to work with Eric a few times uh, in my past, and uh, and kind of you know the writing was on the wall with General and the Tarano brand, so I was already talking and in, in talks with Eric about about joining uh, Espinosa, and uh, I was really I was with General till December thirty first. January second, I became the director of sales for for Espinosa, mm -hmm. and we've hit the ground running. It's been a it's been an amazing three months. Yeah, and uh, and I'm I'm getting you know I inherited a sales team, so I'm getting to get out and getting to know these guys. And yeah, and Nick's a really cool cat, as as you've pointed out. <laughs> I just honestly <laughs> he's very unique. Man, and I think very, you yeah, know, yeah. You you honestly like as as someone who has to you know I, I have experience in sales obviously had to do it for my radio show had to do it when i used to own a cigar shop in the province metro uh you know it's like it's like you know we, we i've i've been do I, I do it here for security weekly and it's one of those things now like w what nick has accomplished in the short time that he's been here and i think it's relatively short if you look yep. at the time frame right uh, and in there uh, even though it seems like an eternity, because because yeah. you've 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 transplanted yourself there, but it's like yeah. honestly, like off Stogie Geeks responsibilities, I'm going through that same type of um, branding identity with the cybersecurity field, right? You know, uh, when I came on board here at Security Weekly, you know, I'm emailing people, and then they're like contacting Paul. Or I'm emailing people and they're contacting Sam, who, who's our director of operations. And it gets to one of those things. And now, finally, I'm able, you know, when I go to shows f that are in that field and get out in the field like you guys do, yeah. you know, for us to get out and do shows, it's a little bit different because our territory, we really have customers all over the world, right? So it's a little different for me to hop on a jet plane. I don't have okay. my own plane. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I, I go to the show, but I try to. Uh, carve out your own niche and I think that that's super important and bringing it to a bigger conversation I think not only is it important for, for the person that's on the road but I also think it's important for the cigar company themselves to do and um, business wise I think some of them do it well I think some of them are over the top and I think some of them need to do it better and I, I, the, again, like anything else in life, you kind of need that balance and, yeah, exactly. and stuff like that. The, the, the Goldilocks yeah. bell curve. Yeah, yeah. So, Jack, what's going on at Espinosa? Uh, a lot of exciting things. Um, you know, we, uh, like I said, I hit the ground running with these guys getting to know the sales team. And, um, and this week was Nick's turn. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
truthfully, this has been a, a breath of fresh air hanging out with, hanging out with Nick. It's you know Nick Nick's a lot of fun to hang out with, and he's got a lot of he's built a lot of great relationships in the short time he's been in it. Mm -hmm. So um, so it, it, th this week's been very very relaxing. We've got a lot of business done, uh, uh, getting out there and you know preaching Espinosa, shaking people's hands, kissing babies. Uh, yeah, that's what you got to do. You know, you know, it, there is a, a, a there is a cap development of that. And what I mean by that is uh, in a geographic now, – now, do, do you handle all of the United States? Yes. Yeah, so so you travel with many versions of Nick and the sales reps. There's only one version oh. of Nick. <laughs> True, yeah. right? But you, 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 you get a chance to travel with them. And it's amazing in this industry how you have you, – when you have boots on the ground and you have someone who likes the rep or the director of sales and whatnot, um, that not only that the employees can get behind – the product moves out the door yeah. and it's amazing because geographically i only travel up the east coast right but i find out that you know when the rep subsides or when the boots on the ground subsides from the shop sales tend to linger thereafter so it's very important for like an espinoza to stay in front even though they have a long history they have a, a great line of cigars the consumer now with the social media and the choices and everything, you kind of got to be right front and center almost all the time. Absolutely. How Absolutely. do you try to accomplish that? Like you, you specifically. It, you know, it, it, there, there's no secret to success in this industry. You know, you got to hit the road. You got to not only, uh, you know, stay relevant with retailers, but with consumers. You know, you do all the big events. Uh, you know, in the Taranio days, everybody wanted to hang out with me. Everybody wants to hang out with Eric now. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, having having me on board frees up Eric to, you know, Eric was doing a lot of things that he really shouldn't be doing, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, he was involved in a lot of the the day-to-day -day stuff. And, mm -hmm. and Eric is, Eric is Eric, and he's a, an amazing individual, and he is the guy in the room that everybody gravitates to. So you want Eric for the events. You want Eric to be there, and, and nobody speaks of Espinosa Cigars with the passion that Eric does. Or, or the knowledge of this history. Eric's been around for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, so me being on board and getting to work with these guys and, and, and doing smaller events and cutting lights and, and meet and greets kind of frees Eric up for, to you know, er Eric's been doing a lot on the East Coast, as, as you have, but now it's going to free him up to travel the entire United States to the big events. Yeah. Yeah, and and so. it's it's needed to to do that, and if and if and, and if he can get those duties to to someone uh, who with your background could handle that position with white kick gloves, so to speak, yeah. and deliver that message of Espinosa to the public, yeah. and to the retailers and to the consumers, uh, it does free up for expansion. So we could expect to see Espinosa pop up in more and more places. Absolutely, that's the goal. That's the goal. I, been, if uh, not, if not, <laughs> you, you won't be seeing it. Uh, yeah. If not, Nick Goss will be your new co-host. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. But, but, sure. Uh, but we certainly, um, you know, I, 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 I've, I've traveled with just about everybody in the first three months of the year, and uh, I, I plan to have an you know, an extra turn with them before the trade show coming up uh, at the end of June this year. It's not, you know, usually it's middle of July. Right, right. They moved it up on us. So, you know, we're, we're like crunch for time with with new brands that are coming out, with putting the show booth together. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of behind the scenes things going on. Again, me being on board frees Eric up for those things. Yeah. And uh, and I know they're they're busy at the office this week. You know, Eric's in Miami this week, so Eric, Eric Jr., Hector Alfonso, these guys are, are you know, Anthony, our graphics designer. They're they're working very hard on 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 the trade show. Mm -hmm. So uh, so you know, it's 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 a fun ride. I've I have a passion for this industry. I have a love for this industry, and I've always been passionate and a big fan of Eric cigars. So mm -hmm. this was an easy transition for me. Yeah. And you've always worked in this industry, correct? Off and on for about thirty five years. Off and on for thirty five years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, it's 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 uh it, like I said, it's it's every it's time I leave they pull me back <laughs> in. Well, I mean, it, it seemed like it was a natural transition for you. I mean to to, yeah. to go from where you were, uh to you know, and, and it, it it was a natural transition, especially if you, you know, round up one calendar year and jump two days later. 
And the only reason why it was two days because you had a holiday stuck in there. Yeah, I was off. And I was off work January first, as most people were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, January first so always used to. When I was younger, well. it was always like a, a a rough start to the year. You know, yep. you end up doing your partying or whatever. But uh, you know, as as a, a new father, I was just sleep deprived. That was it. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't hung over. <laughs> this January first, you know, for sure. Oh, um, you got a new baby. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah thank you. He's seven months. So nice. Yep, seven awesome. months. It's it's crazy. It's funny. It's, uh, the Stogie Geeks listeners are flashing me. You know, they found out like through me being here, week after week. They email me pictures of their kids, or they giving me fatherly advice, or they ask. Well, I have one listener whose um, kid is two months younger than my son, and it's amazing when they email me and ask me questions like how much ahead of the cur- now I'm a brand new father right yeah. first time so how much ahead of the oh yeah don't worry about that like you know the cheeks get like rosacea and so like for no reason and like yeah. you know is it the formula I'm like nah is he drooling yeah oh, three weeks he's gonna be teething yeah. and it's amazing how like <laughs> nice. you know the, the, the cheeks get all rosy yeah. like almost like like they were standing outside or skiing all day and then boom and then the rosacea starts and then it's like how do I know that I'm like, I don't even know how I know that <laughs> like literally I describe to people when you walk into the hospital and and you know you 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 I was there in the delivery room and everything and when you leave it's like you leave your old self and it's yeah. kind of like the matrix like I instantaneously walked out of the hospital once the security guard in Rhode Island, they approve of like the seatbelt, make sure that I put the car seat in right. And yeah. once you sign a paper, mom and baby left hospital. And it was like they inserted a it's chip in my brain and like I knew what to do. <laughs> it, it's like scary. They, they hand you the child and you're like, don't I have to fill out paperwork? Isn't there like a license I need to? So I'm just going to take this thing and leave now? It, <laughs> right. Like, I, I feel like I should, you know. Register for something. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's crazy. And then, you know, I'm not used to, you know, going to the doctors and, you know, saying Caden Hosemper and, and, and boom, and like me having access to the files. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like it's kind of crazy, you know. That's but it's much, like, much different than the, all the books you had to read to conceive the baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. You know, yeah, well, for sure, my it's fav- amazing. My favorite Rodney Dangerfield quote. Uh-oh. Oh, here we go. <laughs> go for it. The best part of kids is making them. Yeah, <laughs> probably right. But you know, yes. and then you know, he's born, so there goes my my, gotcha. my retirement. But it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It was it was it was awesome. It's uh, I, I learned something every day. You know, but in regards to Espinosa, like what. Are what are some of the challenges that the you know uh, getting out there and doing that like we, you know when when you have the graphic arts and the market position and you're going for some of the shelf space what are some of the some of the kind of uh, tipping points or or points you make to some of the retailers who are watching this show who might consider bringing in the brand if they don't have it already what are some of some of the some of the uh, awesome I guess you could say talking points or cigars that really stick out within well, your Well, again, Espinosa in the top, for a, for a company that doesn't advertise in Cigar Aficionado, right. they have three top 25 rated, actually top 15 rated cigars right. in, year, in their year in top 25 list. Right. They have La Ranja, which I think somebody was smoking. I'm, this so, one. The I'm, La Ranja I'm so glad you went 13. there. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the 601 Red. Was 15 a couple of years ago. The 601 Blue was number six one year, and then we have more 90 plus ratings than than I can even think of. We just got another one with the with the Laranja Lancero. We got a 91, and these are all cigar aficionado ratings. Mm-hmm. So uh, so, I, I mean, Espinosa. Some of the, some of the 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 hardships on the road and the trouble on the road is Espinosa for the longest time has been known as an East Coast cigar. Yep. So we're spreading the word, and you know, part of be, me being on board is 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 opening up Eric to, to to hit California and to hit Texas a lot harder and to hit the Midwest and mm-hmm. and, and areas that we need to grow in mm-hmm. that, that we can grow. You know, the, er, Eric has built an incredible portfolio of cigars. Yep. And and truly, they should be a part of everybody's store, in my opinion. Uh, I I agree. Even but, bringing, but we 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 battle the same thing everybody battles: shelf space. Yeah, that's that is a that you is know, a that challenge. Is, that is the one thing you constantly hear. Because you have, you have different business models with the actual retailers, right? You have some retailers that only have a hundred facings, and that's their business model, and they do pretty well, right? Mm-hmm. Then you have other uh, that you walk into a humidor and you got six hundred facings. And they do pretty well. And the different types of consumers flock to 
um, that humidor for that specific reason. I find in my travels that people, especially here within Rhode Island, where as a consumer, we have the luxury to really drive 10 minutes and hit another cigar shop. They're kind of like Dunkin' Donuts this year, <laughs> right? Like seriously, I mean, we have 39 now. Uh, in Rhode Island, and and there's rumor that there's always rumor, you know, that there's uh, there's seven more coming and whatnot. And I'm not even talking about the ones that you know have the cigar and the vape and all of that stuff. I'm talking about the, like the true tobacco shop. We have some super cool shops here in the Northeast. That I mean, they're destinations. You know, you talk about Twins. You talk about uh, David Garofalo's place, uh, t uh, two guys, right? Uh, I mean, you know, a as someone who used to mountain bike and go up to that ne neck of the woods, Bear Brook and whatnot, I always yeah. used, you know, coming back home to Rhode Island, it's a two-hour drive, Boston's in the mix, I'm grabbing a cigar, right? Exactly. You know, especially after pedaling my f chunky butt all day, <laughs> you know, and doing that, you know, and, and we would stop by the Twins and do that there and then seeing the growth of them and then seeing, you know, uh, uh, two guys... And then other, but then you have like those are the bigger ones, right? Then you could go off the top of your head. You don't have to, but like the smaller ones that do well over there too. Oh, absolutely. And, and and then go and then so Rhode Island really has that mix of mixed bag there too. And I find from your position either it would still be the same argument. It's shelf space, it's shelf space. Now when you go down to South Florida, Espinosa is everywhere, you know. But there again, I, I will tell you, South Florida, Espinosa is everywhere. But yeah. it, South South Florida is probably the most fickle market in, <laughs> in, in cigars because yeah. everybody's down there. Yes, yeah. So right. it, it is it is a it is a, a, a very tough competition for shelf space in South Florida because all the manufacturers, short of a few, are in Miami. I know, I know, and and, so. and that's so. So when when I, when I when when we traveled out of Florida, I remember us grabbing some of the Espinosas because up until a couple of years ago. They weren't really as a presence here in Rhode Island as as they are now. Mm. Obviously, to your testament, sure, right? And yeah. and you know, it, 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 I find it that the consumer really gravitates to the brand if they have the luxury of going to more than one tobacconist mm. within their town. Now, some, uh, you know, I get some some emails from listeners. Uh, by the way, if you want to comment on the show, it's Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. Uh, if you want, it, you know, it, they. They say, oh, well, you know, I go to one shop only because it's a 45-minute drive each way to the next tobacco. It's like, yeah. man, that's <laughs> – I hope you like the people you're smoking with is yeah. my comment to them, you <laughs> yeah. know, because cause geographically there. But, yeah, so they are – so Espinosa is known as, as East Coast. How have you been doing um, – how are events – when you do events, East Coast versus West Coast, do you find a difference in the consumer? Well, do you well, find a difference in the retailer? You know, it, well, you got a lot of new consumers. A lot of there's a lot of areas that 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 Espinosa is not as strong as it will be one day. Uh, and and you're dealing with a lot of the newer consumers where you have to explain to them the portfolio and and the different cigars and all the ratings and kind of get more in depth than than when you would do a, a an event. Um, where the fan base is really strong with Espinosa. So Espinosa's fan base is some of the some of the the craziest people around. Sure. I mean, their social media presence is short of probably one other company. Yeah. There is no other social media presence like Espinosa, and we do an event to reward that called La Zona Palooza in yep. November, that we invite everybody down there that's active on Facebook. And uh, and and kind of treat them to three days of roasted pigs and and uh, and, and games and you know they get to hang out with Eric for three days. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, you know, oddly enough, I was one of the only, I was the only non Espinosa person that worked for another company that was allowed at La Zona Palooza. Awesome. So uh, so uh, I I've been there a couple of years, but this year I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there as an official Espinosa. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so so it. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it's getting out there, knocking on doors, meeting people. It, it's it's a lot of, you know, I spend I spend probably 200 days or more away from my wife every year traveling, mm. you know. But absence makes a heart grow fonder. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Does so she like cigars? She loves cigars. Then She loves cigars and she loves the industry and she supports everything I do. So it's it, it works out really well. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, there was three or four years ago in the Duran days, when I did that show, my wife was here. Mm -hmm. You know, she traveled with me a lot of times. She can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but um, yeah, this is just a great industry, and, and more and more the demographic of women in the cigar industry is growing. Yes. So you'll, you'll get events that you'll have 20, 30 women there, which are incredible events. Yes. And, and, and I remember the days when that was growing and my wife was there. It was, she was entertaining all the women and the ladies and having, you know, she's members of Ladies of the Leaf and all the different, sure. you know, uh, groups that they have. So, uh, so no, I mean, listen, it, the cool thing about me talking about cigar shops is I get to travel the country. So I see the different dynamics. You know, there's amazing cash and carry stores. Mm -hmm. There's incredible lounges. There's the dynamics of different regions of cigar sh stores um, from California to, to the East Coast is, is, uh, is so unique to that area. Mm -hmm. that, it, that it's cool to be able to get to see it. I mean, Nick does an amazing job, but he's basically stuck here. Right. You know, the reps are stuck where they're stuck. I get to go in and out of these, t these places and, and visit stores and, and get blown away. I was just at a store in Fayetteville, um, North Carolina, mm -hmm. that one of the most amazing stores I've been in in the country. What, what made it unique? Like, what, what, I mean, what made it stick out in your mind? This was an old, like, I, God knows how many years, a 60, 70-year-old, barn basically mm. that they converted into a cigar shop it's called Anstead's okay and to give them a plug mm. and just two stories and private lounges and private meeting rooms and an incredible humidor and the owner's an amazing guy get you know I love meeting new people mm -hmm. and 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 getting to meet him I knew of him but I'd never met him mm -hmm. and uh I you know the the rep was funny because he didn't tell me what we were you know he didn't say anything about the store, and when we sure. got there, I was just blown away. Yeah, and uh, we had a really nice event there. So, so again, that's an area where there are a lot of Espinosa fans. Yeah, we we've met. I've met like some super cool shops that uh, are are in and in, like they're either in an old mill building. Um, there's a uh, industry cigar shop down in Texas that you know they they're, they're, they're it's like an old mill building and the way it's set up and mm. you get the super high ceilings. Yeah. Um, I have I love mill buildings like my my advertising agency office used to be in a mill building uh, here over in East Greenwich and 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 I love the space uh, you know and and I love super cool like when they make the cigar shop a destination yep. even if it's a smaller shop but again I think that the retailer needs to really define like where their space is and where they want to achieve. And really carve out like their niche, because I really st truly believe that you could put a cigar shop. I know you could do this successfully in Rhode Island, and it's probably only a matter of time until it happens. You could put a cigar shop literally across the street from another cigar shop, and what it does from an economics perspective and a business perspective is it bring a w it brings awareness to the community. Right. Exactly. And, you know, you, you don't do competitions, cigars up one dollar, down dollar and doing all you, the, the, the business owner that gets into those games are, are the, the, they're what I call like they're externally centered business owners. Right. As opposed to being internally centered and say, hey, this is my shop. This is what it has to offer. This is why we're different from all the other shops. And the ones that kind of play that role are the ones that I see that do well. Yeah, the ones yeah. that sit in a shop and say, hey, if you heard what next door is doing or they got rid of so-and-so, they're going to close. It's like, come on. Like, you know, you don't want to. I don't want to hear that as a consumer. Uh, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to do that. And, and neither do, do their other customers. And so getting back to your job, you get to meet so many fascinating people. And what I like about this industry is I could literally go on travel and sit in a cigar shop. And obviously, I'm not a loss for words. Right. Sometimes I can't find the right words, but, uh, you know, I, I can strike a conversation up with someone and learn so much about it before. Um, when I when I was on the radio, I had the luxury where the radio station was across the street from vintage, like okay. literally in that. So I would stare out the window <laughs> and watch people like stare out the window and do a radio show. Keep in mind, there's no video. In so so just. like, you know, the producer would be over here. Right, the clock would be over here, and I literally like stare <laughs> and see us walking into vintage because I'm talking to people and doing that there. And and what and so I had a chance to go to vintage. This is my point, okay. right? I lived in Bristol. I drive all the way to Westerly, typical Rhode Island. It was an hour and five minutes <laughs> with no traffic because they're literally on both sides of you do a diagonal from the state. Yep. There, if I had a helicopter, it'd be better, but I don't. So and, and so I would travel there 
couple hours b- before the show, enjoy a stick, do some show prep, awesome business stuff. And I do that there. But I would meet someone new, especially in the summertime, because they'd be traveling to Westerly. So you'd meet some of the out of towners that they get and all that and just meet people. I go travel to Hilton Head yep. with, with my family. There's one cigar shop on the island. Uh, if anything happens to me here at Story Geeks or Security Weekly, there will be two cigar shops on that island, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> right? And, and, and it, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where you get to meet people and we can sit down and have a cigar. As long as we don't talk politics, sex, religion, or yeah. Yankees, Red Sox, baseball, I'm cool with everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? As soon as you start talking into those. You gotta those, be careful. There's uh, <laughs> one point in Connecticut. There's like an invisible line. <laughs> sure. And it's, you know, you can't. Uh, you know, you I. You draw a line across Hartford. You gotta be careful. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Why? You talk about the Yankees, Red Sox yeah, thing? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of crazy. I, I, I get so much crap wearing my Yankee hat all, all the time. You know, and and I say, okay, if we're gonna go down this path, tell me, name six of your starters. Yeah, I'll name all nine of mine, and then we can have a conversation. And if not, I'm serious. And they're like, Are you as serious? Long, <laughs> as long as we can all agree, Tampa Bay sucks. <laughs> I think that's that's the bond that the Yankees and the Red Sox need. However, I am. I uh, my second team is the Miami Marlins. Okay, and the fact that Jeter well, went down there, man. and the fact that Jeter went down there, was <laughs> sorry just the, to hear that. Was that, was <laughs> is, that, is, that a, is that a Willie Ma- Ma- Willie Morante plug? Is that what that is? No, no, it's not. It's not. Wow. I, actually, I remember talking to Willie and they telling him they that. got about five hundred fans a second. Game <laughs> You're right. Of the year. He's like, you like the Marlins? I'm like, dude. I was like, I, like that. First of all, if you have ever been down to the stadium, they got fish tanks in the stadium. Like it's freaking. Well, well, well they, they gotta get people in the stadium somehow <laughs> to stare at the fish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, yeah, for sure, you know. But it's it, I don't know. I, I like I said, it's it's one of those things where you can sit down with people and enjoy a cigar yeah. and really talk to them and take them there, you know. Yeah. Which which I'm super excited, which, which I love about the industry. Well, that, that, I, I love what I do because every day is an adventure. Mm. Every day I'm going somewhere, you know, different. You know, different part part of New England. I just picked up upstate. I'm, I meet every, new people. Every day it's, with Nick this week has been an adventure. Every day. Oh, I'm adventure. sure. I'm sure with him and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure he can he can come back and do a whole series of shows just on, just, <laughs> just on him. Now you are launching a new cigar soon, right? Yeah. Yesterday. 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 Why don't you tell the story? The Laranja Escuro, the Maduro uh, version of the Laranja with a beautiful Brazilian Matafina wrapper. Okay. Uh, we don't have it here. Okay. So no, I, I have it, the... It, you, it, yeah, yeah I, you have the regular Laranja, but it it arrived. I left the warehouse Monday at 6. I think the shipment arrived like at 7.38, and I had a 6 a.m. flight. Oh. So I didn't get to bring any with me. But uh, the people have been going crazy ordering it. And, and you know, we pre-released it. It was going to be a show release. Okay. But we, we brought out like 1,500 boxes um, mm-hmm. to release now. And whoever doesn't get in on this initial release will have to wait for the show. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the orders have been coming in fast and furious. And no doubt there will be people upset next week when it's sold out and, and, uh, and blame Nick. But but what can you do? <laughs> well, it's actually, life. no, yeah. th- let's talk about I think that that's a great move because when I interview, I mean, we, we seldomly get the, the opportunity to have someone who's, who's um, with the actual company. Uh, other than a rep or something within the area, like if they're on Skype. And we always talk about that, how, like, why wait for the show? I get waiting for the show because you get all of, you you have a captive audience. People. So one time a year, retailers come to us. Statistically, right? Statistically, like there's a lot within that show that, year after year like other conferences in other fields doesn't matter could be cybersecurity, could be you know you could get together for any type of organizations or the the, the, the show be, with the social media presence and access to people within the company you know i get it when the retailers come to you but i think that that's a smart move you do a pre-release build up some hype and momentum yeah. build that demand right that's there. Oh, I didn't get into it. Oh, great. I better go stop by the Espinosa booth at IPCPR yeah. to get the orders in. And, because, they, and they better. Because yeah. no, <laughs> uh, no, because I'm sure they will. Because in that gap, there are going to be either podcasts or magazine articles or ratings that come out and stuff that actually build that. And, and they all orchestrate and play together. 
which from a business perspective, I think that that's super important. And I think that that, that, that was a well-played move. Because yeah. there are a lot of people we interview, oh, well, I can't tell you what we're going to do now <laughs> be, uh, until we talk to Cigar Aficionado first. I get it, right? We're not the Bible. <laughs> but, okay, but it's January or it's February. What are you doing from a business perspective uh, for, you're going to bank on one year? I don't think the show has that much star power for one year of sales. Just yeah. just observation. You could tell me I'm wrong. You could tell me I'm off my rocker. You could tell me off my rocker you're online wrong, or offline. You're wrong and you're off your rocker. Uh, no. really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted me to tell you. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no I'm just saying. Like, like, Because before, before, I really think that that, that, that event had its, its power. And it then, definitely doesn't have the power that it had before. It yep. definitely doesn't, and uh, and you know they're they're the, the the people at the IPCPR are working hard to to try to gain some of that back. But you know we we don't we 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 kind of shoot ourselves in the foot too by giving sure. everybody the deals and you know I <laughs> pre back deals pre yeah. deals uh, the 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 deals you get at the show you could basically get. But you know like like back in the Tarano days, we used to have something at the show, uh, whether it be a large ticket raffle item. One year we gave away fifteen hundred dollars in poker chips, mm -hmm. uh, and and based on how big your order was on the day on the third day of the show, like at two o'clock in the afternoon, we had this giant tumbler with all the orders in it, and we drew somebody and handed them fifteen hundred. Something at the show that incentivizes retailers to go, mm -hmm. because right now you don't need to go. Yeah, you, you're, you're going to get the same deals. Yeah, I've I've said that for the past two years that I've been uh, here on Story Geeks, and when I had my my, my radio show uh, for about cigars, it, it, I said the same thing. Like, yeah. you know, what do you got? And it was great. It's great for us, the the Story Geeks listeners. You know that 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 historically speaking, last week of May all of June and all of July leading up to what's coming up. We'd be getting press releases and, or stuff like that that the vendors would send us. And I'd literally sit here during Stogies of the Week and saying, this is coming out, this, you know, this is coming out. And it'll which happen again this and, year. And, 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 and it happens year yeah, after we, year. We have two other releases coming out of the show. So yep. uh, it, it's, you know, La Ranja, the, the, the Oscuro, the Maduro that, that we just released, uh, the pre-release yesterday, we, uh, we, we, we believe strongly in that cigar. And, and uh, you know, that something like that could backfire on you. You know, you release a cigar three months out of the show, and it's a dud. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're going to hurt your sales at the show, but we believe strongly in this. Enough people have smoked it that are blown away by this blend. Mm -hmm. You know, Hector Alfonso did an amazing job with it. Eric, Eric Jr., they all, they all did a great job. So we, we, we strongly believe in this blend, and, and we just think that releasing this now is just going to create one hell of a buzz leading up to the show. Mm -hmm. Nick, any local? I'm asking Nick because he might. Uh, you're the national guy, right? So now we got to yep. go hyper local. Any locals shops that are hopping on that that exclusive? Yeah, I, I can name one off the top of my head. Uh, I know. Um, <coughs> excuse me, Cigar and Lounge there in Watertown, Mass. Okay. So that, that there's a plug. Yep. Um, so they're they're becoming an Espinosa Lounge. Mm -hmm. They're getting it shipped out. Uh, they should have it. You know, ASAP. So we we have we have. Uh, maybe a dozen lounges yep um, it's an approximate figure across the country the lounges uh had the first you know they they get it for a week or two before anybody else does yep. so we started taking orders on it yesterday but the only orders that shipped were to lounges yeah so next week or the week after we'll start shipping to to everybody mm -hmm. but the orders the orders have been piling up and and uh and we're getting close to running out yeah, and you said it was 1500 boxes and then 500 of each size Okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Three yeah. sizes. Those are gonna go. Here. Boom. Oh. And they're ten count boxes. Sure. So they're going. They're gonna go quick. Fly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're gonna go, and and and, and it's gonna build hype. But I, like you said, you got you. It, it's like boxing or MMA, right? You gotta you gotta trust your stuff, right? You gotta trust that you know you went in, you did a pre-release. It's gonna build hype. It's a great cigar. You feel confident about it. So let's just go ahead and do it. And I, and I think that that. That's a really creative piece to, to, to do. And I don't think enough cigar shops do that, you know. And I like the way that it gets rolled out to the different levels first. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, it's, you know, if for you to be an Espinosa shop, there's a certain level of commitment. Mm -hmm. Then Absolutely. if you're a, a smaller shop and whatnot, not, not that all customers aren't great, but some of them should have a little bit of privilege. And I, and I, th I think that it, that's it, a great it, business it, move. It's a two-way street. Has it to be. really is. Has to be. Has to, I, I tell people, you know, I had this conversation yesterday at dinner with, with, with some of the clients, and, and it's one of those things where, like, it has to be a two, <clears throat> regardless of industry, it has to be a two-way street with, with customers, especially in this day and age yep. with, 
you always have access to getting the product at another channel, right? As yep. you know, especially with the birth of online, especially with 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 online presence uh, there. So the consumer has the, the 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 way. So you have to come up with a creative business model to roll out a product to build up enough hype and to build up en enough credibility to have it be sought out. And I think that some um, cigar companies do that very well, and I think that others should should need improvement. But before we get to Nick, Jack, I want to take some time out for the Stogie Geeks listener um, uh, to get involved. How do they get involved in that social media movement? Can you take us a little bit of time to... Post, post Facebook, Instagram. Um, Twitter. Not really. Not really? Okay, that's Not fine. Not really. Uh, but it, Instagram and, and, uh, and Facebook, just... You know, post post yourself smoking Espinosa cigars. You know, post yourself promoting Espinosa cigars, and believe me, we're we're watching that. We're monitoring that, and and you know, come July August, you're going to start getting invitations. You know, we'll it's it was 200 people last year, and uh, I think it's going to grow to three, four hundred this year. Awesome. Do you know where the event is? Talk it, it's it's been at Espinosa's warehouse. Okay. And then the third day. There's a park in Hialeah Gardens that we do a pig roast, and it's a, a, it's a party, a night party that we have there. That'll probably remain the same, but I think we're outgrowing the warehouse. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it, we're, we're looking for new, something new and different for, for, you know, there's been guys that have been to every one, guys that pride themselves on yeah. being at La Zona Palooza 1, 2, 3, and this one <laughs> coming get up a, is 4. They get yeah. all amped up, yeah. They, they get all amped up, so. Yeah. You know, we, we want to give them something different. We want to give those guys something different. Mm. So. Speak to the guys of Vintage. They have their own <laughs> private island nice. for their party. Yeah. They, they literally t have an event every year, and they go to a private island, and they and, and, they, and they have a hoot nanny for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, hoot nanny. A hoot nanny. Hoot nanny. It, 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 it legitimately is a hoot nanny. I know. <laughs> I, I, I've never been uh, schedule-wise. I've, I've yet to go. It's always in the middle of uh, – I mean, I live in Bristol. And it's usually in July, off the top of my head. So it's it's kind of crazy down there. And 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 uh, I live on the parade route in Bristol, which Bristol, Rhode Island is the oldest parade, a Fourth of July parade in America. Wow. So like um, our house becomes the go-to house in July. Yeah. I could literally open up a bed and breakfast and do pretty well. They just got a <laughs> a, a, a limousine. They bought a yes. old Cadillac limousine. Yeah. They, they, they show up now. Now they'll go to events. <coughs> <laughs> and they'll they'll fill it up with people, and they just show up in the, in this limo. It's yeah, super it's awesome. cool idea. Yep. I think it's great, and again, it's a testament of of having fun at what you do. You have to have fun, you know. Otherwise, why do it? Yeah, sure. You have fun if, at what you if, do. If you can't have fun in the cigar industry, it, exactly. You, you you need to find something else to do. Sure. If, I, you, if I, you're not having fun, it becomes work. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And who the hell wants to work? It yeah. takes all day. Exactly. You know, <laughs> <laughs> takes all day, and your I think chances. We, we put it on the on the on the. Somebody pointed it out to me the other day. The reggae, the cigar yep. we put out, reggae. Yeah. In the smallest font I've ever seen in my life, it says, "If you find something to do that you love, you'll never work a day in your life," which exactly. is one of Eric's favorite. Yeah. And it says it on the inside of that, or not on the inside, on the on the, just on the end of that band. And uh, I was with you when somebody pointed that out, right? I believe so. Yeah, we couldn't read it. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> we needed a magnifying glass, but it said it there. It was, it was you guys have a cutter over there? I do, I do. Thank you. You want a straight cutter or a V cut? I'd love a V if you have one, if I have a choice. Oh, no, you just got one. Nick, no. you're too slow. Jack's oh. on it. Wow. Yeah. Um, he just wanted to pull out the man purse. The, the Sean <laughs> Christian. Yeah. I have one. Yours is all broken Shameless in. I gotta break. I got to break mine in. You know, it's just, I use it. Uh, well, what like I do that. is I put a baseball in it. I tie it with a rope. I, I put it under the mattress. I sleep on it. <laughs> just, just like, you know, the uh, little league there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Talk to me about what, what, what I'm smoking now. This is the original one? The original Laranja. Yep. You know, it's that beautiful uh, Brazilian orange wrap wrapper. of uh, It's a, like a, a Habano with a very unique color to it. I, I love most things Brazilian. Yes. Mm. Just throwing that out there. Gotcha. Brazilian wax. You got you. Hey, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> manscaping. Uh, Nick, talk to us a little bit <laughs> about what you do. The so you can listen. To, show me a mug. I, I think this is. Uh, I uh, Nick, these are going to be for sale. Nick, let soon. me tell you something. Nick Goss is the best self promoter in this industry. Yes, yes. I mean, he does shower curtains. He does. You know, his cars got stickers. Eric Espinosa go, and his suitcase has a Goss <laughs> sticker on it. Yes. So uh, he does a good thing of a uh, good good self promoting. 
I, I've yet to get a mug or a tumbler. I, I haven't been offered or given anything. Nick, you got to take care of people. What's the problem? No. I'm cheap. I'm a cheap <laughs> SOB. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, talk to us a little bit about how you get started and, 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 yeah. and what, what, what lines you represent. So and uh, born uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you show the mug? In the hills of Kentucky. Did you show the mug to the I, camera? I, I did. Okay, I'll, I was, I'll, I'll do it again. Yeah, okay. do it again. Do it again. Look at, look at this mug. Yeah. This is like, uh, it, it's, it's awesome. Are you selling them? I'm not. I'm not. I'm just giving them out as promos. Uh, my friend Crystal actually started up a, a company um, where she can put anything on anything. Awesome. So nice. it's the, the, the cold tea designs. Nice. And it's, I mean, she, she she was always a good person to know. Now she's definitely a good person to know. Mm. So I, I'll we'll go over there on the weekend and I'll be like, hey, I got travel mugs. Let's make these say the goss man cometh. Yeah. I got these. Let's, let's put my, my face on it. So you just decided to put I'm, I'm everything on everything. Way. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great idea. We, we brainstorm ideas during the week, then we meet up on the weekend, and we say, oh, how about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you get started? So I, I was managing a, a cigar shop up, up in New Hampshire. Okay. And Which um, one? Uh, t- tobacco Haven. Oh, okay. Yep. yep. So I managed that for about I know I'm going to get so much hate email for asking that. They're going to be like, dude, are you serious? And and I'll be like, yeah, I'm serious. I don't, you know. That, that's okay. I've I've heard that you were there yeah, no, a bunch no, of times. No, I just, no, no you questions. Know. We're, we're, we're on to Cincinnati. Yeah. We're for those Cincinnati. of you who know well, me, I'm scatterbrained normally. <laughs> and, and when I do a show, I'm really more scatterbrained. So that's just the way it goes. That's okay. Uh, on to yeah. Cincinnati. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was talking to um, one of the manufacturers, and he was having Which trouble. One? Yeah, which one? <laughs> he was having trouble finding a rep. And long story short, you know, I wasn't thinking at the time, but six months later, um, I remember the conversation. I said, well, shit, you know, he's a pretty good-sized company, and, and if he's having trouble finding a, finding a, a independent rep, mm-hmm. you know, there's other companies out there having that problem. Sure. So I started at probably the worst possible time I could, in, you know, end of September. Yep. I picked up Hammer and Sickle, and my, my rally cry or my motto was almost like Game of Thrones. You know, like, if I survive the winter, yes. I'll be okay. Right, right. <laughs> if I could just make it a May, right? Exactly, May. yeah, exactly. Because I, I know I got the show coming up yep. that people talk about. Yep. Right, right, right. No one, no one wants to become an become a independent broker, you know, after the summer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I started up with Hammer and Sickle. They were um, my first company. I, I went to them. Uh, Eric Wentworth is a very good friend of mine. I've known him for 10 years. At the time then, it was uh, Adrian Acosta, I believe, was the national sales manager of AJ Fernandez. Mm-hmm. He came, I, I talked to him, you know, uh, about a month and a half later, I became the, the AJ Fernandez rep for most of New England, um, all the states except, uh, I think Connecticut is, is Brad. Brad Siderer, great guy. If you haven't met him, he's, uh, he's an animal. Does he have his own mugs? He does not have his own mugs, but Brad, Cold Tree Designs, we can get you your own does mugs. Does he have his own stickers? I don't even have a sticker. You have a sticker? We got stickers. All right. Two, two, two ninety nine. <laughs> what? But wait. <laughs> but extra shipping. $2.99? <laughs> you can double up that order for um, you pay the shipping. I did that. I, I ended up that, that December. Um, I took on Espinosa. Uh, this is December of 2017. Espinosa. Espinosa. I, I pronounce stuff. I, I sound like I don't know if you guys have picked up on this. I, I sound like the mayor from The Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I, it, it's funny because I, I, where I'm from, most people sound like me. But I'll travel 30 miles south, the 30 miles. Oh north, yeah. And people just stare. Oh yeah, yeah. Say that again. N- N- Nick Malillo from Foundation. When I talk, he just takes his phone and he just records me talking, mm. just so he can play it back and, and listen to it. It's a Northeast thing. I get I that. So. I get that. We were, well, well, <laughs> we yeah, I'm trying, what I'm trying to I'm trying to weave in the companies. In, in, uh, in, uh, I represent blah, 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 blah. You see, it's like a story. It's a journey. Get in the car. We're going for a journey. Yeah. You get a sticker. Yeah. Maybe a mug. My buddy Nick. You get the promise. You get the promise of a mug. Well, you I, I don't like the, oh, you know, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> I'm a Lillo. Right. <laughs> right. So then you started. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 just hammer and sickle you started? Just just hammer and sickle. How, no testament to hammer and sickle, how was that challenge-wise? Because let's face it, right? They, they've done, they have some sticks. They have, they have yep. a line. Um, some are really sought after. Some are kind of, they've been uh, 
online, right, at the time for a while? No? No, they I, I, I don't. No? I don't okay. They have no? Been. Okay, no. they've never been online. No. Okay, so wait a minute. That's the They, they have a box. It's a, it's a, not a concrete. Plus some, M- marble. The, the, it's a marble they, they, box. When I took on there, they had a crystal Ma- box. Marble. A mar- marble. 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 Okay, head. so they were never online when, when they're not. Okay. No, no, not, not that I know of. Okay, no, no, no. Sure, sure, yeah. So then you, you go there, and then you say, I'm from him and Sickle, and they're like, who? Yeah. Or what? Yeah, so, so, so I knew. I reached out to Eric Wentworth. And I said, hey, you guys looking for a rep? And he said, well, not in-house. So that's actually what kind of led me to say, oh, okay, well, I'll call you in a week. <laughs> sure. Sure. So it's uh, great guys. You know, that they knew, you know, I was starting up. They knew that, that, that they know who they are. They knew I only had them. They took care of me. They mm-hmm. really, you know. Awesome. And Eric Hansen, God love him, wonderful, wonderful human being. Mm-hmm. And he, so when I saw this, I said, you know what? Going back to what we were talking about before, I want to have fun. I want to work with people that, you know, want to work with me. I want to work with people that, you know, that, that, that are just pleasant to be around. I, I, and and they're, they're the epitome of that. Mm-hmm. So I, I've got, I've got absolutely no complaints. And, I've been preaching about how reps on the road need to really, really change. And we're going to end this interview with, with this topic here. Mm-hmm. Um, reps on the road really need to change and retailers need to start to get creative about bringing in new types of clientele. Like you said, Jack, having, having women come in, there's been a surge of women coming in. I think it's great for the industry. I think it's great for awareness of the industry as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's great for uh, them to for, for women to have more recognition about their participation with premium cigars. Uh, there are a few women company out there that that are, are doing well, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and they produce some pretty fascinating sticks for sure. Um, you're bringing an element to your events that I think is ultra creative. And you have a specific event coming up on the 13th of April. I do. I right? Do. Where I remember uh, I'm on the newsletter of Vintage, and I think the guys of Vintage really, really get it, the, that, that crew. And they, they do a great job. I'm, I, I would probably move to that side if I, had, if I was in control of everyone I live with. Yep. But, you know, um, that's probably not. I wouldn't want to drive an hour and a half for babysitting now. Exactly. And <laughs> come back every day so but that being said like a a very super cool shop but they're doing an event to where you're gonna sing yes yes and one night only and and it's a one night event it's your music debut yes yes um for those of you who are listening and not watching or or listening and watching um you don't sing no no uh, (laughs) um not, I mean, I, I do. I just don't. I don't sing well. Sure, you want to give a sample? Or you, nope. you can't. No, no, oh, yeah. I, I got to save it. I got you know. I have to go yeah. practice my voice. I'd you have, have to, a disclaimer. You, know, you can only exactly. sing a vintage. Exactly. I got it. I it's got like it. when when Michael. Well, Jack- the problem is <laughs> the theme of that event. You, you can't don't practice because you can't sing well there. Well, this is a lot like when when Michael Jackson was on The Simpsons. Yeah. yeah. You know they paid him like like right now like I'm being paid. No, I'm not. Being, but I signed up for this for the for the interview part. You guys aren't paying me for the singing, Nick. If you pay me for the singing, Nick, I'll sing. But gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> I w- I wouldn't want to steal from from anyone's no, thunder. No, no. I think it's ultra creative that you know you you want to create an event, have fun. The um, donations to either have you sing continually, bad assumed, or have you not sing mm-hmm. and stop the song immediately. There will be some sort of a donation element that's going to go to a cause. Yes. So, I had approached Tommy a, a couple months back from from Vintage, and I said, Tom, how would you like to do an event where I'm going to be honest with you? You're probably not going to sell more than you would on that normal day. Hell, you might even sell less. <laughs> <laughs> but people will talk about it for years to come. Mm. And he looked at me and said, Go on. She said, well, I, I can't sing, but I'd love to stand up. I'd love to do two 45-minute sets where I just, you know, I show up and I, I just sing. I just sing my heart out. And he got that, that smirk he does. He's like, yes, yes, let's do this. 
So then, then we were afraid of Greg because Greg is more of like the the voice of reason sure. of the group. Tommy and I would just get, oh yeah, and then then, then we're gonna. But Greg built so, that place with his own bare hands. Yes, and if he you did. haven't had a chance to stop by Vintage, and if you're ever in Rhode Island, look him up. Yeah. Vintage Cigar Lounge, Greg's awesome a, destination. A, a, a retired place. police officer, and yeah. just like every now and then, like he's got to pull us back down to earth. So we were like, well, let's get it nailed down. But then let's let's tell Greg, yeah, a little bit later on. So about a month, month and a half ago, we sat down and we said, all right, Greg, we we gotta tell you something. And we told him the idea, and. He actually had a, a, a genius. Yeah, it was just going to be like a fun, wacky kind of event. But what Greg said was, you know what? Yes, but let's do this. Let's have people will come up with a menu, either like pay X amount to get you to, to stop singing for, for a minute, pay X amount to get you to stop singing for a song, or whatever it is. Um, and all that money is going to go to Cigars for Warriors. Mm. And we said, shit, yeah. If we can take this this wacky, crazy, outlandish idea. And actually, now we're having fun and we're helping a, a, a wonderful cause. Mm. Sign me up. Win-win. And exactly. you get to have fun and it's a different element, which yep. I think is so important for the reps to do because the buy three, get one is wacky and who knows what yep. the FDA is going to uh, enforce or did or does or anything like that. It's kind of moot. It's in water. Uh, it, g- grabbing, you know, uh, a, a meal mm-hmm. on a paper plate—it just doesn't—it just doesn't fascinate me as a consumer. Yeah. But going to something like that, like I am, th- th- what, what day is that on? Thirteenth. It's um, April thirteenth. is a Saturday. So it's next Saturday. Yep. I am going to make like every effort to to get my butt down there, and 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 to to participate. It should, uh, it should with be that, a good time. because I think that that's super. Like, a, it's just a great idea, and, and just to be a fly on the wall and yeah. and set list. Like, you, you you're even going far as you you have songs picked out and oh, everything. Oh yeah. Oh, I just I just emailed Tom the the playlist two or three days ago <laughs> for, for them to go through and review. And that now, uh, my only question is: Do you do you have like the lyrics printed out, or I, um, uh, how are you gonna do that? I have some of the, we're going to set up a computer. I mean, some of it I know in my head. Sure. Some of the songs, it might say it on the screen. But I don't want it to be like a karaoke. I'm going to be out in the audience. I'm going to be, you know. Oh, it's going to be. It's going to be. Are you going to be mic'd I, up? I don't throw around the word epic. Are you? Gonna, I, I was going with epic. Because I, I think, honestly, I, it's 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 great idea. It's you. great idea. And I think, you know, kind of it reminds me of what, uh, Different level, different thing, but Queensbury Tobacco and Pipe decided yep. to do the rep roast. Okay, and that was created by by their staff. And I and I last year's was uh, I I heard it was an epic event and it yep. went and it went well for them. And this year's now that they're, they're having like they have mug shots of who they have yep. and they've been hyping it up via social media <laughs> of different mug shots and some of the and it's like as someone guess. you know you go through your social media repertoire every day whatever you go through you know someone who works online and we're pretty much always on it yeah and and you see the some of the mug shots and i take time to read them oh my god this is gonna be classic you sure. know and and I'm, I'm doing my best to make my way down there theirs is the like first week of may yeah and uh, or sideways from there, up there, right? It's three hours from here. But I'm supposed to be in Florida that week, and I'm okay, so yeah. bummed. I was actually talking to Dan uh, a couple of days ago. It was his birthday, and uh, you know, I called him to his birthday. He's like, "You coming to the rep roast? You know, we, we mm-hmm. got your tape, blah blah blah." And I'm like, "I I I don't know if I'm going to Florida logistically. Yep. You know, if I'm doing that in there. So I'm gonna do uh, uh, my, my darndest to make both yeah. events." Uh, so there for sure, but I think that that's be, great. So, so the one at Vintage, um, so Tommy says, so, so what, what line do you want to focus on? Sure. Do Espinosa. But then I... Um, Did Eric I, catch, catch wind of this, Jack? Uh, yeah, yeah. so, so that's, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm getting to. <laughs> oh, okay. So then I was like, I don't... Do I tell Eric? Do I... <laughs> but I guess um, the Vintage group went down went down to the area. Okay. I, I got a call about last week from, from Eric Espinosa. Like, yeah, bro, you uh, you're doing this thing? <laughs> These guys from Vintage? Uh, y- yeah, yeah. You're going to sing? Uh, yep, yep. People going to pay money to have you not sing? That's the idea. Yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, all right bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that went. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Awesome. Well, Nick, you got to come back. Absolutely. For sure. Jack, you got to come back with an update uh, if you want uh, after IPCPR or right before if you want to do some releases uh, there. You can show up via uh, Skype or Zoom. 
Okay. So you, you, you we can do a, a, a remote um You got my number. Interview. Yeah, for sure. I wanna thank Jenny, you. Jenny, I got you. Oh, oh. Oh. Don't start here. Yeah, I don't wanna <laughs> steal <laughs> anyone's thunder, right? I don't wanna <laughs> You got the preview. There we go. That's it. Eight, go. six, we'll seven, five, three. Oh. I, I couldn't sing either. I, just I could play to, guitar. I just wanted to paint the shut up. I, I do air guitar. I, I invented the back-to-back -back air guitar. There you go. People used to air guitar. Yeah. And the first person to go back-to-back -back with another man in air guitar. Nice. Yeah. That's a good time. Invented you have a picture of it? No. Okay. You should get a picture <laughs> of it and post it. You know, for those of you who want to follow Nick and Jack, they will be on the Stogie Geeks notes. All you have to do is go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 299. All of their social media links and pictures and bios will be there. Just so you know, I'm stealing them from Facebook. So, so if I'll you want to get in on the Lazona Palooza, hashtag your post, hashtag Espinoza every day. That's hashtag Espinoza every day mm -hmm. and you'll be able to go to a trip that is growing year after year and you get a chance to go to the warehouse that sounds like a super awesome opportunity for sure and i want to thank both of you guys for coming in last minute and thank allowing you. me to interview you thank you for appearing on story geeks episode 299 next episode will be 300 i hope it's going to be awesome i hope it lives up to its hype thank you we'll see you next time